tunneling and the debates around tunneling are as old as Dead by Daylight itself. And it's pretty understandable. When you get tunneled as Survivor, it's extremely frustrating and oftentimes you feel very powerless and you don't like that you got taken out of the game early. Now I will delve into tunneling itself and how we could come up with a solution for it without nerfing killer, but at first I want to raise this major point. In April of this year, the University of Scott John decided to conduct a study where he played 50 games as Survivor and, and he kind of how many of those games the killer actually tunneled. Not tunneled him, just tunneled a survivor in the game. The definition of tunneling that he provides that I think most people would agree with is the killer going for the same survivor over and over until they're dead. That's a pretty good definition, I would say. And he found that 5 out of 50 games, or 1 in 10, or 10% actually had tunneling. Which makes me think that tunneling is annoying when it happens, but it doesn't happen as much as people say it does. This is because people have a negative bias, not in Dead by Daylight, but in life in general. We like to focus on the negative stuff. It's fun to rant about something negative than it is talk about something positive for most people. So even though it is extremely rare for most people to be tunneled, some people say I get tunneled every game. I don't think this is the case. However, I will agree that tunneling is extremely annoying when it does happen and behavior should do more stuff to prevent tunneling from being such an effective strategy and something that killers can use to easily sway the game in their favor. Before I go into some potential fixes for tunneling, I just want to say that guys, killers are not evil. Most of them at least. They don't want to tunnel to make you miserable. Some of them just want to win and if presented with the opportunity they will tunnel. But I have three solutions for tunneling that obviously wouldn't get rid of it permanently, but it, they would definitely help. The first one, which might not seem related to tunneling, is better map design. Now listen, this might just be a me thing, but if I get unhooked and the killer is coming to tunnel me, but I have a jungle gym here, a medium sized loop there, and shack not too far away, dude, bring the tunneling on. That's gonna be a fun chase. But if I get unhooked in the middle of nowhere and the nearest pallet is five miles away, then t being tunneled is gonna be frustrating because there's nothing I could have done there. The only thing I could have done differently in that scenario is just have anti-tunneling perks, which I don't think is a good solution. So obviously, fixing maps is going to be something that is not going to happen overnight. It's a hard thing to fix. But the, the reason I bring it up is behavior keeps making just extra variations of maps for no reason. I think this confuses people more, and I think they should just take the time and focus on the maps that we have right now and make them more balanced. Maps are like the least balanced thing in the entire game, and content creators have been complaining about it forever. So if behavior only makes manages to make maps more balanced, to have a more even pallet spread, so anywhere you're unhooked you can find pallets, then tunneling wouldn't be as bad because then you would have a line of defense. If I get hooked in fractured cow shed on the side opposite from shack diagonally, there's usually like a TNL there and like a short loop. Like you know the loop with the tent around it? Yeah, that's all you have. So that's a lot more frustrating because I'm like, oh the killer's tunneling me and I can't do anything different because I have no resources. But obviously that's not an issue directed for tunneling and these next two will be directed for tunneling. The next solution is something that I proposed in an older video and that is having a blood point incentive to do so. This was something that was actually in the game before through the form of old barbecue and chili which used to give you extra blood points for every unique hook up to a maximum four stacks and then you would get double the blood points if you hooked all four survivors. So some people would just want to get their barbecue stacks instead of winning the game. So I think a blood point incentive would actually promote some killers to not tunneling. And I don't think anyone would be angry at this because this would reduce tunneling without nerfing killers and making their gameplay worse. So that's a pretty easy solution that I think they should add. I think most people would really like that. The last idea that I have is probably going to be the most controversial. Here's what would happen. After a survivor is unhooked, they have no collision for 15 seconds. What this would do is it would prevent the survivor from body blocking the killer who is not trying to tunnel. I know, I'm sure that many of you have gone through this. You're literally not trying to tunnel. You're trying to go for the healthy unhooking survivor and the hooked survivor will go and body block you. So what you do is you just sit there and you're like, okay, I'll just wait. And then they realize that you're just going to wait and then the panic starts to set in. It's always really funny. So survivors losing their collision after being unhooked for 15 seconds would stop that from happening and it would also stop the killer from doing the same thing like body blocking them from getting to a loop. So I think that is the first part of this change that I think is probably the least controversial. The other thing that I want to add is the borrowed time effect, the endurance effect only runs out when the survivor is not being chased. So the killer can no longer wait out the timer basically. This is an idea that I'm pretty in between about to be honest even though I'm including it in the video. So I'm not even sure that it would be a great idea it would definitely stop tunneling by a lot but a lot of killers would find this really frustrating especially when you're playing from behind so if you ask me you don't even have to add this you could have uh, an extra little thing that i'm about to add the last thing that i want to add to survivors being unhooked is that they should get like a 24 meter radius where they can see palace and windows kind of like base kit windows of opportunity but only for like 15 seconds even if you don't want to add the endurance lasting as long as the survivor being chased that's fine i i think that might be a little much. Let's be 
be even more generous. Let's count out the base kit endurance lasting uh, during the chase, and also let's count out the better map design because behavior is never going to fix maps, probably. They've been doing a lot of good decisions recently, but not when it comes to maps. I think a blood point incentive, I think no collision for the first 15 seconds, and I think a default windows of opportunity for also the first 15 seconds would immensely help with tunneling. But let me know if you agree, disagree, comment, and let me know if you also have any proposed solutions to tunneling, because I know that's a very popular video that people like to make. There's like 20 videos on it right now. I have an older video about it, so tunneling is always going to be a hot issue and people are always going to discuss it. But yeah, let me know what you thought and thanks for watching.